alternate history or alternative history, sometimes abbreviated AH, is a genre of fiction consisting of stories that are set in worlds in which one or more historical events unfolds differently from how it did in reality. It can be variously seen as a subgenre of literary fiction, science fiction, and historical fiction. Different alternate history works may use tropes from any or all of these genres. Another occasionally used term for the genre is a la history. See also fictional universe. Since the 1950s, this type of fiction has to a large extent merged with science fictional tropes involving cross-time travel between alternate histories or psychic awareness of the existence of our universe by the people in another. Or ordinary voyaging into the past or into the future that results in history splitting into two or more timelines. Cross-time, time splitting, and alternate history themes have become so closely interwoven that it is impossible to discuss them fully apart from one another. Alternate history looks at, what-if scenarios from some of history's most pivotal turning points and presents a completely different version, sometimes based on science and fact, but often based on conjecture. The exploration of how the world would look today if various changes occurred and what these alternate worlds would be like forms the basis of this vast subject matter. In French, Italian, Spanish, Catalan and German, the genre of alternate history is called Uchronie slash Uchronia slash Uchrono slash Uchronie, which has given rise to the term Uchronia in English. This neologism is based on the prefix II and the ancient Greek IIY one half II, meaning time. A Uchronia means literally, in, no time. This term apparently also inspired the name of the alternate history book list, Uchronia.net. Definition in writing an alternate history, the author makes the conscious choice to change something in our past. According to Stephen H. Silver, alternate history requires three things. 1. The story must have a point of divergence from the history of our world prior to the time at which the author is writing. 2. A change that would alter history as it is known. And 3. An examination of the ramifications of the change. Several genres of fiction have been confused as alternate histories. Science fiction set in what was the future but is now the past, like Arthur C. Clarke's 2001, A Space Odyssey or 1984, are not alternate history because the author has not made the conscious choice to change the past. Secret history, works that document things that are not known to have happened historically but would not have changed history had they happened, is also not to be confused with alternate history. Alternate history is related to but distinct from counterfactual historia euro the term used by some professional historians when using thoroughly researched and carefully reasoned speculations on what might have happened if. As a tool of academic historical research. History of alternate history literature. Equals antiquity and medieval equals, the earliest example of an alternate history is found in Livy's Ab Urbi Condita. Livy contemplated an alternative 4th century BC in which Alexander the Great expanded his empire westward instead of eastward. He asked, what would have been the results for Rome if she had been engaged in war with Alexander? Livy concluded that the Romans would likely have defeated Alexander. Jonat Martyrell's 1490 epic romance Tyrant Low Blank, written when the loss of Constantinople to the Turks was still a recent and traumatic memory to Christian Europe tells the story of the valiant knight tyrant the White from Brittany who gets to the embattled remnant of the Byzantine Empire, becomes a mega-duke and commander of its armies, and manages to fight off the invading Ottoman armies of Mehmet II, save the city from Islamic conquest, and even chase the Turks deeper into lands they had conquered before. In Book 2 Chapter 17 of Machiavelli's Discourses on Livy, he discusses what impact gunpowder artillery would have had on the Roman Empire had it been invented 1500 years earlier. Equals 19th century equals, one of the earliest works of alternate history published in large quantities for the reception of a popular audience may be the French Louis Geoffroy's Histoire de la Monarchie Universelle, Napoli copyright on A la conquête et du monde, which imagines Napoleon's first French Empire victorious in the French invasion of Russia in 1811 and in an invasion of England in 1814, later unifying the world under Bonaparte's rule. In the English language, the first known complete alternate history is Nathaniel Hawthorne's short story Pease Correspondence, published in 1845. 
it recounts the tale of a man who is considered a madman due to his perceiving a different 1845, a reality in which long-dead famous people are still alive such as the poets Burns, Byron, Shelley, and Keats, the actor Edmund Keane, the British politician George Canning, and even Napoleon Bonaparte. The first novel-length alternate history in English would seem to be Castle Holford's Aristopia. While not as nationalistic as Louis Geoffroy's Napoli copyright on A la Conquête et du Monde, 1812 a Euro 1823, Aristopia is another attempt to portray a utopian society. In Aristopia, the earliest settlers in Virginia discover a reef made of solid gold and are able to build a utopian society in North America. Equals early 20th century and the era of the pulps equals, a number of alternate history stories and novels appeared in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. In 1931, British historian Sir John Squire collected a series of essays from some of the leading historians of the period in the anthology If It Had Happened Otherwise. In this work, scholars from major universities as well as important non-university-based authors turned their attention to such questions as if the Moors in Spain had won, and if Louis XVI had had an atom of firmness. The essays range from serious scholarly efforts to Hendrik Willem van Loon's fanciful and satiric portrayal of an independent 20th-century Dutch city-state on the island of Manhattan. Among the authors included were Hilaire Belloc, Andrew Copyright Moroy, and Winston Churchill. One of the entries in Squire's volume was Churchill's If Lee Had Not Won the Battle of Gettysburg, written from the viewpoint of a historian in a world where the Confederacy had won the American Civil War considering what would have happened if the North had been victorious. This kind of speculative work, which posts from the point of view of an alternate history is variously known as a recursive alternate history, a double-blind what-if, or an alternate alternate history. Churchill's essay was one of the influences behind Ward Moore's alternate universe novel Bring the Jubilee, in which General Robert E. Lee won the Battle of Gettysburg, which paved the way for the eventual Confederacy victory in the American Civil War, renamed the War of Southern Independence in this timeline. The protagonist, autodidact Hodgins Backmaker, travels back to the aforementioned battle and inadvertently changes history, resulting in the emergence of our own timeline, and the consequent victory of the Union instead. American humorist author James Thurber parodied alternate history stories about the American Civil War in his 1930 story, If Grant Had Been Drinking at Appomattox, which he accompanied with this very brief introduction. Scribner's magazine is publishing a series of three articles, If Booth Had Missed Lincoln, If Lee Had Won the Battle of Gettysburg, and If Napoleon Had Escaped to America. This is the fourth. Another example of alternate history from this period is H. G. Wells' Men Like Gods in which several Englishmen are transferred via an accidental encounter with a cross-time machine into an alternate universe featuring a seemingly pacifistic and utopian Britain. When the Englishmen, led by a satiric figure based on Winston Churchill, try to seize power, the utopians simply point a ray gun at them and send them on to someone else's universe. Wells describes a multiverse of alternative worlds complete with the paratime travel machines that would later become popular with U.S. pulp writers, but since his hero experiences only a single alternate world this story is not very different from conventional alternate history. The 1930s would see alternate history move into a new arena. The December 1933 issue of Astounding published Nat Skuchner's Ancestral Voices, quickly followed by Murray Leinster's Sidewise in Time. While earlier alternate histories examined reasonably straightforward divergences, Leinster attempted something completely different. In his world gone mad, pieces of Earth traded places with their analogues from different timelines. The story follows Professor Minnett and his students from a fictitious Robinson College as they wander through analogues of worlds that followed a different history. A somewhat similar approach was taken by Robert A. Heinlein in his 1941 novelette Elson. A professor trains his mind to move his body across timelines. He then hypnotizes his students so they can explore more of them. Eventually each settles in the reality most suitable for him or her. Some of the worlds they visit are mundane, some very odd, and others follow science fiction or fantasy conventions. World War II produced alternate history for propaganda, 
both British and American authors wrote works depicting Nazi invasions of their respective countries as cautionary tales. Time travel as a means of creating historical divergences, the period around the Second World War also saw the publication of the time travel novel Less Darkness Fall by L. Sprague de Camp where an American academic travels to the Italy of the Ostrogoths at the time of the Byzantine invasion led by Belisarius. De Camp's work is concerned with the historical changes wrought by his time traveler, Martin Padway, thereby making the work an alternate history. Padway is depicted as making permanent changes and implicitly forming a new time branch. Time travel as the cause of a point of divergence has continued to be a popular theme. In Ward Moore's Bring the Jubilee, the protagonist lives in an alternate history in which the Confederate States of America won the Civil War, and he travels through time and brings about a Union victory in the Battle of Gettysburg. When Astora's assumptions about the nature of time travel lead to the complete replacement of the visited time's future rather than just the creation of an additional timeline, the device of a time patrol is often used, most notably in Poole Anderson's Time Patrol Collection A Euro, where guardians race up time and down time to preserve the correct history. In the most celebrated of the series, De Lender Estate, the interference of time-traveling outlaws causes Carthage to win the Second Punic War and destroy Rome with massive consequences for the present day. A more recent example is Making History by Stephen Ferry, in which a time machine is used to alter history so that Adolf Hitler was never born a Euro, which ironically results in a more competent Nazi leader who is none of Hitler's faults or syphilis-induced mental illness, resulting in Nazi ascendancy and longevity in this altered timeline equals cross time stories equals hg wells cross time or many universes variant was fully developed by murray leinster in his 1934 short story sidewise in time where sections of the earth's surface begin changing places with their counterparts in alternate timelines this subgenre was used early on for purposes far removed from quasi academic examination of alternative outcomes to historical events Frederick Brown employed it to satirize the science fiction pulps in their adolescent Riyad Ursa Euro, and fears of foreign invasion of Euro in the classic What Mad Universe. In Clifford D. Simak's Ring Around the Sun, the hero ends up in an alternate earth of thick forests in which humanity never developed but where a band of mutants is establishing a colony. The storyline appears to frame the author's anxieties regarding McCarthyism and the Cold War. Paratime themes also in the late 1940s and the 1950s, however, writers such as H. Beam Piper, Sam Merwin, Jr. and Andre Norton wrote thrillers set in a multiverse in which all alternate histories are coexistent and travel between them occurs via a technology involving portals and or paratime capsules. These authors established the convention of a secret paratime trading empire that exploits and or protects worlds lacking the paratime technology via a network of James Bond-style secret agents. This concept provided a convenient framing for packing a smorgasbord of historical alternatives into a single novel either via the hero chasing or being chased by the villain, S, through multiple worlds or via discussions between the paratime cops and their superiors regarding the histories of such worlds. The paratime theme is sometimes used without the police. Paul Anderson dreamed up the old Phoenix Tavern as a nexus between alternate histories. A character from a modern American alternate history Operation Chaos can thus appear in the English Civil War setting of A Midsummer's Tempest. In this context, the distinction between an alternate history and a parallel universe with some points in common but no common history may not be feasible, as the writer may not provide enough information to distinguish. Paratime thrillers published in recent decades often cite the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics to account for the differing worlds. Some science fiction writers interpret the splitting of worlds to depend on human decision-making and free will, while others rely on the butterfly effect from chaos theory to amplify random differences at the atomic or subatomic level into a macroscopic divergence at some specific point in history. Either way, science fiction writers usually have all changes flow from a particular historical point of divergence. Prior to Everett, Science fiction writers drew on higher dimensions and the speculations of P. D. Ospensky to explain their characters' cross time journeys. Quantum theory of many worlds, while many justifications for alternate histories involve a multiverse, 
the many-world theory would naturally involve many worlds, in fact a continually exploding array of universes. In quantum theory, new worlds would proliferate with every quantum event, and even if the writer uses human decisions, every decision that could be made differently would result in a different timeline. A writer's fictional multiverse may, in fact, preclude some decisions as humanly impossible, as when, in Night Watch, Terry Pratchett depicts a character informing Bims that while anything that can happen, has happened, nevertheless there is no history whatsoever in which Bims has ever murdered his wife. When the writer explicitly maintains that all possible decisions are made in all possible ways, one possible conclusion is that the characters were neither brave, nor clever, nor skilled, but simply lucky enough to happen on the universe in which they did not choose the cowardly route, take the stupid action, fumble the crucial activity, etc. Few writers focus on this idea, although it has been explored in stories such as Larry Niven's story All the Myriad Ways, where the reality of all possible universes leads to an epidemic of suicide and crime because people conclude their choices have no moral import. In any case, even if it is true that every possible outcome occurs in some world, it can still be argued that traits such as bravery and intelligence might still affect the relative frequency of worlds in which better or worse outcomes occurred. The physicist David Deutsch, a strong advocate of the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, has argued along these lines, saying that by making good choices, doing the right thing, we thicken the stack of universes in which versions of us live reasonable lives. When you succeed, all the copies of you who made the same decision succeed too. What you do for the better increases the portion of the multiverse where good things happen. This view is perhaps somewhat too abstract to be explored directly in science fiction stories, but a few writers have tried, such as Greg Egan in his short story The Infinite Assassin, where an agent is trying to contain reality scrambling whirlpools that form around users of a certain drug and the agent is constantly trying to maximize the consistency of behavior among his alternate selves, attempting to compensate for events and thoughts he experiences but he guesses are of low measure relative to those experienced by most of his other selves. Many writers a Euro perhaps the major a Euro avoid the discussion entirely. In one novel of this type, H. Beam Piper's Lord Kelvin of Other When, a Pennsylvania state police officer, who knows how to make gunpowder, is transported from our world to an alternate universe where the recipe for gunpowder is a tightly held secret and saves a country that is about to be conquered by its neighbors. The Paratime Patrol members are warned against going into the timelines immediately surrounding it, where the country will be overrun, but the book never depicts the slaughter of the innocent thus entailed, remaining solely in the timeline where the country is saved. The cross-time theme was further developed in the 1960s by Keith Lormer in the first three volumes of his Imperium sequence, which would be completed in Zone Yellow. Piper's politically more sophisticated variant was adopted and adapted by Michael Curland and Jack Chalker in the 1980s. Chalker's G.O.D. Incorporated trilogy, featuring paratime detectives Sam and Brandy Horowitz, marks the first attempt at merging the paratime thriller with a police procedural. Curlin's Perchance, the first volume of the never-completed Chronicles of Elson, presents a multiverse of secretive cross-time societies that utilize a variety of means for cross-time travel, ranging from high-tech capsules to mutant powers. Harry Turtledove has launched the Cross-Time Traffic series for teenagers featuring a variant of H. Beam Piper's Paratime Trading Empire. Rival Paratime Worlds, the concept of a cross-time version of a world war, involving rival paratime empires, was developed in Fritz Leiber's Change War series, starting with the Hugo Award winning The Big Time, followed by Richard C. Meredith's Timeliner trilogy in the 1970s, Michael McCullum's A Greater Infinity and John Barnes' Timeline Wars trilogy in the 1990s. Such paratime stories may include speculation that the laws of nature can vary from one universe to the next, providing a science fictional explanation of Euro or Venera Euro for what is normally fantasy. Aaron Alston's Doc Siege and Siege Devil take place between our world, the Grim World, and an alternate Fair World, where the Siege retreated to. Although technology is clearly present in both worlds, and the Fair World parallels a history, about 50 years out of step, there is functional magic in the Fair World. Even with such explanation, 
the more explicitly the alternate world resembles a normal fantasy world, the more likely the story is to be labeled fantasy, as in Paul Anderson's House Rule, and Loser's Night. In both science fiction and fantasy, whether a given parallel universe is an alternate history may not be clear. The writer might allude to a POD only to explain the existence and make no use of the concept, or may present the universe without explanation to its existence. Equals Major writers explore alternate histories equals, in 1962, Philip K. Dick published The Man in the High Castle, an alternate history in which Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan won World War II. This book contained an example of alternate alternate history, in that one of its characters is the author of a book depicting a reality in which the Allies won the war, itself divergent from real-world history in several aspects. It was followed by Vladimir Nabokov's Ada or Ada, a family chronicle, a story of incest that takes place within an alternate North America settled in part by Tsarist Russia, and that borrows from Dick's idea of alternate alternate history. Some critics believe that the references to a counter-Earth suggest that the world portrayed in Ada is a delusion in the mind of the hero. Strikingly, the characters in Ada seem to acknowledge their own world as the copy or negative version, calling it anti-terror while its mythical twin is the real terror. Not only history but science has followed a divergent path on anti-terror, it boasts all the same technology as our world, but all based on water instead of electricity. When a character in Ada makes a long-distance call, all the toilets in the house flush at once to provide hydraulic power. Isaac Asimov's short story What If, is about a couple who can explore alternate realities by means of a television-like device. This idea can also be found in Asimov's 1955 novel The End of Eternity. In the novel, the Eternals can change the realities of the world, without people being aware of it. Guido Mazzelli described the defeat of Italy in World War I in his 1975 novel Past Conditional where the static Alpine front line which divided Italy from Austria during that war collapses when the Germans and the Austrians forsake trench warfare and adopt Blitzkrieg 20 years in advance. Kingsley Amos set his 1976 novel The Alteration in the 20th century, but major events in the Reformation did not take place, and Protestantism is limited to the breakaway Republic of New England. Martin Luther was reconciled to the Roman Catholic Church and later became Pope Germanian I. The Plot Against America by Philip Roth looks at an America where Franklin D. Roosevelt is defeated in 1940 in his bid for a third term as President of the United States and Charles Lindbergh is elected, leading to increasing fascism and anti-Semitism in the U.S. Michael Chabon, occasionally an author of speculative fiction, contributed to the genre with his 2007 novel The Yiddish Policeman's Union. This book explores a world in which the state of Israel was destroyed in its infancy and many of the world's Jews instead live in a small strip of Alaska set aside by the U.S. government for Jewish settlement. The story follows a Jewish detective solving a murder case in the Yiddish-speaking city of Sitka. Stylistically, Shabon borrows heavily from the noir and detective fiction genres, while exploring social issues related to Jewish history and culture. Equals contemporary alternate history in popular literature equals, the late 1980s and the 1990s saw a boom in popular fiction versions of alternate history fueled by the emergence of the prolific alternate history author Harry Turtle Dove, as well as the development of the steampunk genre and two series of anthologies a Euro the What Might Have Been series edited by Gregory Benford and the Alternate series edited by Mike Risnick. This period also saw alternate history works by S.M. Sterling, Kim Stanley Robinson, Harry Harrison, Howard Waldrop, and others. Since the late 1990s, Harry Turtledove has been the most prolific practitioner of alternate history and has been given the title Master of Alternate History by some. His books include those of Timeline 191, in which, while the Confederate States of America won the American Civil War, the Union and Imperial Germany defeat the Entente powers in the two Great Wars of the 1910s and 1940s, and the World War series, in which aliens invaded Earth during World War II. Other stories by Turtle Dove include A Different Flesh, in which America was not colonized from Asia during the last Ice Age. In the Presence of Mine Enemies, in which the Nazis won World War II. 
and ruled Britannia, in which the Spanish Armada succeeded in conquering Britain in the Elizabethan era, with William Shakespeare being given the task of writing the play that will motivate the Britons to rise up against their Spanish conquerors. He also co-authored a book with actor Richard Dreyfuss' The Two Georges, in which the United Kingdom retained the American colonies, with George Washington and King George III making peace. He did a two-volume series in which the Japanese not only bombed Pearl Harbor but also invaded and occupied the Hawaiian Islands. Perhaps the most incessantly explored theme in popular alternate history focuses on worlds in which the Nazis won World War II. In some versions, the Nazis and or Axis powers conquer the entire world. In others, they conquer most of the world but a fortress America exists under siege. While in others, there is a Nazi-Japanese Cold War comparable to the U.S.-Soviet equivalent in our timeline. Fatherland by Robert Harris, is set in Europe following the Nazi victory. Several writers have posited points of departure for such a world but then have injected time splitters from the future or paratime travel for instance James P. Hogan's The Proteus Operation. Norman Spinrad wrote The Iron Dream in 1972 which is intended to be a science fiction novel written by Adolf Hitler after fleeing from Europe to North America in the 1920s. In Joe Walton's Small Change series, the United Kingdom made peace with Hitler before the involvement of the United States in World War II, and fascism slowly strangled the UK. Former House Speaker Newt Gingrich and William F. Forstchen have written a novel, 1945, in which the US defeated Japan but not Germany in World War II resulting in a Cold War with Germany rather than the Soviet Union. Gingrich and Forstchen neglected to write the promised sequel. Instead, they wrote a trilogy about the American Civil War, starting with Gettysburg, a novel of the Civil War, in which the Confederates win a victory at the Battle of Gettysburg, however, after Lincoln responds by bringing Grant and his forces to the Eastern Theater, the Army of Northern Virginia is soon trapped and destroyed in Maryland, and the war ends within weeks. Also from that general era, Martin Cruz Smith, in his first novel, posited an independent American Indian nation following the defeat of Custer and the Indians won. Beginning with the probability brooch in 1981, L. Neil Smith wrote several novels that postulated the disintegration of the U.S. federal government during the Whiskey Rebellion and the creation of a libertarian utopia. A recent time-traveling splitter variant involves entire communities being shifted elsewhere to become the unwitting creators of new time branches. These communities are transported from the present to the past or to another timeline via a natural disaster, the action of technologically advanced aliens, or a human experiment gone wrong. S. M. Sterling wrote The Island in the Sea of Time trilogy in which Nantucket Island and all its modern inhabitants are transported to Bronze Age times to become the world's first superpower. In Eric Flint's 1632 series, a small town in West Virginia is transported to 17th century Central Europe and drastically changes the course of the Thirty Years' War, which was then underway. John Birmingham's Axis of Time trilogy deals with the culture shock when a United Nations naval task force from 2021 finds itself back in 1942 helping the Allies against the Empire of Japan and the Germans. Similarly, Robert Charles Wilson's Mysterium depicts a failed U.S. government experiment which transports a small American town into an alternative version of the U.S. run by believers in a form of Christianity known as Gnosticism who are engaged in a bitter war with the Spanish in Mexico. Equals alternate history in the contemporary fantasy genre equals, many fantasies and science fantasies are set in a world that has a history somewhat similar to our own world, but with magic added. Some posit points of divergence, but some also feature magic altering history all along. One example of a universe that is in part historically recognizable but also obeys different physical laws is Poole Anderson's Three Hearts and Three Lions in which the matter of France's history, and the fairy folk are real and powerful. A partly familiar European history for which the author provides a point of divergence is Randall Garrett's Lord Darcy series, a monk systemizing magic rather than science, so the use of foxglove to treat heart disease is called superstition. The other great point of divergence in this timeline occurs in 1199, when Richard the Lionheart survives the siege of Shalaz and returns to England, making the Orngevin Empire so strong it survives into the 20th century. 
Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell takes place in an alternative version of England where a separate kingdom ruled by the Raven King and founded on magic existed in Northumbria for over 300 years. In Patricia Reed's Regency Fantasies, Great Britain has a royal society of wizards, and in Poole Anderson's A Midsummer Tempest William Shakespeare is remembered as the great historian, with the novel itself taking place in the era of Oliver Cromwell and Charles I with an alternate outcome for the English Civil War and an earlier Industrial Revolution. The Tales of Alvin Maker series by Orson Scott Card takes place in an alternate America, beginning in the early 19th century. Prior to that time, a POD occurred, England, under the control of Oliver Cromwell, had banished makers, or anyone else demonstrating knacks to the North American continent. Thus the early American colonists embraced as perfectly ordinary these gifts and counted on them as a part of their daily lives. The political division of the continent is considerably altered, with two large English colonies bookending a smaller American nation, one aligned with England, and the other governed by exiled cavaliers. Actual historical figures are seen in a much different light. Ben Franklin is revered as the continent's finest maker, George Washington was executed at the hands of an English army, and Tom Jefferson is the first president of Apalache the result of a compromise between the Continentals and the British. On the other hand, when the old ones still manifest themselves in England in Keith Roberts's Pavan, which takes place in a technologically backward world after a Spanish assassination of Elizabeth I allowed the Spanish Armada to conquer England, the possibility that the fairies were real but retreated from modern advances makes the POD possible, the fairies really were present all along, in a secret history. Again, in the English Renaissance fantasy Armor of Light by Melissa Scott and Lisa A. Barnett, the magic used in the book, by Dr. John Dee and others, actually was practiced in the Renaissance. Positing a secret history of effective magic makes this an alternate history with a POD, Sir Philip Sidney's surviving the Battle of Zutphen, and shortly thereafter saving the life of Christopher Marlowe. Many works of fantasy posit a world in which known practitioners of magic were able to make it function, and where the consequences of such reality would not, in fact, disturb history to such an extent as to make it plainly alternate history. Many ambiguous alternate secret histories are set in Renaissance or pre-Renaissance times, and may explicitly include a retreat from the world, which would explain the current absence of such phenomena. When the magical version of our world's history is set in contemporary times, the distinction becomes clear between alternate history on the one hand and contemporary fantasy, using in effect a form of secret history on the other. In works such as Robert A. Hainland's Magic, incorporated where a construction company can use magic to rig up stands at a sporting event and Paul Anderson's Operation Chaos and its sequel Operation Luna, where genes are serious weapons of war a euro with atomic bombs a euro the use of magic throughout the United States and other modern countries makes it clear that this is not secret historia euro although references in Operation Chaos to degaussing the effects of cold iron make it possible that it is the result of a POD. The sequel clarifies this as the result of a collaboration of Einstein and Planck in 1901, resulting in the theory of reatics. Henry Moseley applies this theory to degauss the effects of cold iron and release the goetic forces. This results in the suppression of ferromagnetism and the re-emergence of magic and magical creatures. Alternate history shades off into other fantasy subgenres when the use of actual, though altered, history and geography decreases, although a culture may still be clearly the original source. Barry Highheart's Bridge of Birds and its sequels take place in a fantasy world, albeit one clearly based on China, and with allusions to actual Chinese history, such as the Empress Wu. Richard Garfinkel's Celestial Matters incorporates ancient Chinese physics and Greek Aristotelian physics, using them as if factual. A fantasy version of the Paratime Police was developed by children's writer Diana Wynne Jones in her Trestome and Sea Quartet, with wizards taking the place of high tech secret agents. Among the novels in the series, which week stands out for its vivid depiction of a history alternate to that of Trestome and C's own world rather than our own. Terry Pratchett's works include several references to alternate histories of Discworld. Men at Arms observes that in millions of universes, Edward Deeth became an obsessive recluse rather than the instigator of the plot that he is in the novel. In Jingo, 
Bims accidentally picks up a pocket organizer that should have gone down another leg of the trousers of time, and so can hear the organizer reporting on the deaths that would have occurred had his decision gone otherwise. Indeed, Discworld contains an equivalent of the Time Patrol and its history monks. Nightwatch revolves around a repair of history after a time traveler's murder of an important figure in Vims's past. Thief of Time presents them functioning as a full-scale time patrol, ensuring that history occurs at all. Alternate history has long been a staple of Japanese speculative fiction with such authors as Futaro Yamada, Ryo Hanura writing novels set in recognizable historical settings with supernatural or science fiction elements present. In 1973, Ryo Hanura wrote Musubi no Yama Hiroka which recreated 400 years of Japan's history from the perspective of a secret magical family with psychic abilities. The novel has since come to be recognized as a masterpiece of Japanese speculative fiction. Twelve years later, author Hiroshi Aramata wrote the groundbreaking Toito Monogatari which reimagined the history of Tokyo across the 20th century in a world heavily influenced by the supernatural. The TV show Sliders explores different possible alternate realities by having the protagonist slide into different parallel dimensions of the same planet Earth. Equals video games equals, for the same reasons that this genre is explored by role-playing games, alternate history is also an intriguing backdrop for the storylines of many video games. A famous example of an alternate history game is Command and Conquer, Red Alert. Released in 1996. The game presents a point of divergence in 1946 where Albert Einstein goes back in time to prevent World War II from ever taking place by erasing Adolf Hitler from time after he is released from Landsberg prison in 1924. He is successful in his mission, but in the process allows Joseph Stalin and the Soviet Union to become powerful enough to launch a massive campaign to conquer Europe. In the Civilization series, the player guides a civilization from prehistory to the present day creating radically altered versions of history on a long time scale. Several scenarios recreate a particular period which becomes the point of divergence in an alternate history shaped by the player's actions. Popular examples in Sid Meier's Civilization IV include Desert War, set in the Mediterranean theater of World War II and featuring scripted events tied to possible outcomes of battles. Broken Star, set in a hypothetical Russian civil war in 2010 and Rise and Fall of Civilization, an Earth simulator designed to mirror a history as closely as possible but incorporating unpredictable elements to provide realistic alternate settings. In some games such as the Metal Gear and Resident Evil series, events that were originally intended to represent the near future at the time the games were originally released later ended up becoming alternative histories and later entries in those franchises. For example, Metal Gear 2, Solid Snake, set in 1999, depicted a near future that ended up becoming an alternative history in Metal Gear Solid. Likewise, Resident Evil and Resident Evil 2, both set in 1998, depicted near future events that had later become an alternative history by the time Resident Evil 4 was released. Crimson Skies is one example of an alternate history spawning multiple interpretations in multiple genres. The stories and games in Crimson Skies take place in an alternate 1930s United States, where the nation crumbled into many hostile states following the effects of the Great Depression, the Great War, and Prohibition. With the road and railway system destroyed, commerce took to the skies, which led to the emergence of air pirate gangs who plunder the aerial commerce. The game Freedom Fighters portrays a situation similar to that of the movie Red Dawn and Red Alert 2 though less comically than the latter. The point of divergence is during World War II, where the Soviet Union develops an atomic bomb first and uses it on Berlin. With the balance of power and influence tipped in Russia's favor, history diverges. Brief summaries at the beginning of the game inform the player of the communist bloc's complete takeover of Europe by 1953, a different ending to the Cuban Missile Crisis and the spread of Soviet influence into South America and Mexico. Similarly, the 2007 video game World in Conflict is set in 1989, with the Soviet Union on the verge of collapse. The point of divergence is several months before the opening of the game, when Warsaw Pact forces staged a desperate invasion of Western Europe. As the game begins, 
a Soviet invasion force lands in Seattle, taking advantage of the fact that most of the U.S. military is in Europe. The game Battler Stations, Pacific, released in 2008, offered an alternate history campaign for the Imperial Japanese Navy, wherein Japan destroys all three carriers in the Battle of Midway, which follows with a successful invasion of the island. Because of this, the United States lacked any sort of aerial power to fight the Japanese, and is continuously forced into the defense. Turning Point, Fall of Liberty, released in February 2008, is an alternate history first-person shooter where Winston Churchill died in 1931 from being hit by a taxi cab. Because of this, Great Britain lacks the charismatic leader needed to keep the country together and Nazi Germany successfully conquers Great Britain via Operation Celian. Germany later conquers the rest of Europe and North Africa while mass-producing their Wonder Waffe. The Axis launch a surprise invasion of an isolationist United States in 1953, which forces the country to surrender and submit to a puppet government. Another alternate history game involving Nazis is Warfront, turning point in which Adolf Hitler died during the early days of World War II and thus, a much more effective leadership rose to power. Under the command of a new far one quarter air, Operation Celian succeeds and the Nazis successfully conquer Britain, sparking a cold war between the Allied powers and Germany. The Fallout series of computer role-playing games is set in a divergent America, where history after World War II diverges from the real world to follow a retro-futuristic timeline. For example, fusion power was invented quite soon after the end of the war, but the transistor was either delayed or never was developed. The result was a future that has a 1950s World of Tomorrow feel to it, with extremely high technology such as artificial intelligence implemented with thermionic valves and other technologies now considered obsolete. Many game series by Swedish developer Paradox Interactive start off at a concise point in history, allowing the player to immerse in the role of a contemporary leader and alter the course of in-game history. The most prominent game with this setting is Crusader Kings 2, S-T-A-L-K-E-R. Games have an alternative history at Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, where a special area called the Zone is formed. Wolfenstein, The New Order is set in an alternate 1960 in which the Nazis won the Second World War. Online, fans of alternate history have made use of the Internet from a very early point to showcase their own works and provide useful tools for those fans searching for anything alternate history, first in mailing lists and Usenet groups later in web databases and forums. The Usenet alternate history list was first posted on April 11, 1991, to the Usenet news group Recarts SF Lovers. In May 1995, the dedicated news group Sock History What If was created for showcasing and discussing alternate histories. Its prominence declined with the general migration from unmoderated Usenet to moderated web forums, most prominently alternatehistory.com. Today, the self described largest gathering of alternate history fans on the Internet. In addition to these discussion forums, in 1997, Yorkronia, the alternate history list was created as an online repository, now containing over 2,900 alternate history novels, stories, essays, and other printed materials in several different languages. Yorkronia was selected as the Sci Fi Channel's Sci Fi Site of the Week twice. Collaborative attempts by several amateur writers have led to notable accomplishments. The contributors at Il Belisad have made two constructed languages, Brathenig and Wendek. See also Alien Space Bats, Alternative Future, American Civil War Alternate Histories, Axis Victory in World War II, Dizelpunk, Future History, Historical Revisionism, Invasion Literature, Joan Barhinge, List of Alternate History Fiction, Retro Futurism, Ruritanian Romance, Sidewise Award for Alternate History, Steampunk. Notes. Further reading, Chapman, Edgar L., and Carl B. Oak. Classic and Iconoclastic Alternate History Science Fiction. Mellon, 2003. Collins, William Joseph. Paths Not Taken, The Development, Structure, and Aesthetics of the Alternative History. University of California at Davis 1990. Darius, Julian. 58 Varieties, Watchmen and Revisionism. 
in minutes to midnight, 12 essays on Watchmen. Secret Research and Literacy Organization, 2010. Focuses on Watchmen as alternate history. Robert Cowley, What If? Military historians imagine what might have been. Pan Books, 1999. Jevers, Nicholas. Mirrors of the Past, Versions of History in Science Fiction and Fantasy. University of Cape Town, 1997, Hellexon, Karen. The Alternate History, Refiguring Historical Time. Kent State University Press, 2001, Keene, Anthony G. Alternate Histories of the Roman Empire in Stephen Baxter, Robert Silverberg and Sophia McDougall. Foundation, The International Review of Science Fiction 102, Spring 2008. McKnight, Edgar Vernon, Junior Alternative History, The Development of a Literary Genre. University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, 1994. Ndokov, Alexander B. British and American Science Fiction Novel 1950 Euro 1980 with a theme of alternative history 1994-1999. Rosenfeld, Gabriel David. The World Hitler Never Made. Alternate History and the Memory of Nazism. 2005, Rosenfeld, Gabriel David. Why do we ask, what if? Reflections on the Function of Alternate History. History and Theory 41, Theme Issue 41, 90 Euro 103, Schneider Meissen, Matthew. What Almost Was, The Politics of the Contemporary Alternate History Novel. American Studies 30, 3 Euro 4, 63 Euro 83. External links, alternatehistory.com A Euro The largest English language alternate history community on the Internet. Counter-factual.net a Euro site dedicated to alternate history as well as other topics, such as science fiction and creative writing. Changing the Times, is an alternate history electronic magazine written and maintained by alternate historians. It contains a discussion board. For want of a genre, article by Christopher M. Kibisco. Histalk.com is author Richard J. Sutcliffe's collection of alternate history links. The Sidewise Award for Alternate History lists all the winners and nominees for the award since its inception and provides information for recommending works for consideration. Euchronia has an introduction to the topic, and lists over 2,000 works of alternate history.